Hi everyone, welcome to Let's Get Literary. Today I sit down with Monica Exley, author of Now I Explore My ABC, Come Here Butterfly, Rainbow Dots, and more. Together we'll discuss the importance of literacy and dive into some of Monica's books. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. So nice to have you. Thank you for joining me. Oh, it's very nice to be here. Thank you. So let's start from the beginning. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So I am, uh, my name is Monica Exley first, and I'm the author of five published books. And uh, um, I'm actually a first generation college student in my family. So there was always been a lot of firsts for me in that regards and um however i've always had like really really positive mentors on my path so far um I, teachers are like my hero and uh they've guided me through my educational goals um i ended up with two graduating with two bachelors and a master degree and uh, so i'm pretty educated uh my goal in high school has always been like um kind of always been to get um 4.0 so I worked really hard and that's always been I've kind of always been goal oriented I, I achieved that goal I got my 4.0 and then went on and did other things and that's kind of the same thing that I've kind of done with my books too I I have a vision and then I do you know for my books um to, I, I set a goal and then I go for it and reach for it and so I've always been a very goal oriented person um if I might may give some examples um for example um back to my educational journey, it kind of ties in with me as a writer later in life. Um, I've had like, like, for example, my second grade teacher, Miss Paul Doris, she was actually a substitute teacher, but the impact that she's left on me, you know, for later on in life has just been like phenomenal. Um, my, I, I remember these teachers by name and everything, Mr. Fox with his like reading to us for my third grade teachers reading to us every morning, you know, a chapter from a book was like my favorite part, you know, like instilled this passion 
for, for reading in me, you know, just because he was so passionate about it, you know, uh, and Miss Paul Dora is such high standards and to, you know, to like, to like live up to our expectations, you've pretty much had to, you know what I mean? So I've had like great success with like amazing, amazing role models and positive role models, great teachers and everything so far has led me on my journey to where I'm at today. My high school teacher, my biology teacher, another one that had like set the bar really high, high standards. Like, and my goal was to get that A, but like, I like, I didn't sleep nights in a row, you know, but I eventually got my A, (laughs) but you know what I mean? Just like, just being like being positive on some in a child's life and you know being a positive role model is just like it does wonder to to the students and I, I realize that and I acknowledge that and I, I think teachers every everywhere every chance I get. Tell us where do you live now? What is your life like right now? Right now I'm actually um, a full time author. Um, I'm located in Los Angeles. So I I'm pretty much living my dream right now. So I'm just focused on my art. I'm pretty much just writing full time and I'm doing like, um, I'm accepting commission opportunities every chance I get for like to t- to speak at schools with children or to talk about my writing experience. I'm doing, I'm looking for bloggers to, you know, um, help me along the journey and me to help them, you know, on their blogs. So I'm looking for, I'm just doing a lot of like uh, freelance, a lot of, um, like I said, commission opportunities, also a lot of volunteer, you know, just to kind of like spread awareness and the news of my books out there. I actually have, uh, I have 10 books and, you know, I, I write really well when I'm like writing multiple books at one time. And so I actually have like 10 books in the works right now. And um, I'm hoping, you know, in the near future, they'll they'll be out there. But a big change that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to start using a pen name. So um, I might switch back to my, like, full name eventually, or maybe not. I don't know. I just want to try something new. And, like, I'm excited to eventually get that out with my my pen name, my secret pen name. So that's where I'm at right now. Tell me about the first book you wrote and what inspired you to write it. Absolutely. So the first book, um, I actually have it right over here. It's, um, it's called Letters to Alexander. Um, it, and this book here, um, the whole journey of it, it took me like to write it and to publish it was three months long. And the reason it like went by so fast is because like, like it, it's pretty much in response to a traumatic experience that happened for me, the loss of a child, loss of my child. And so this was kind of like my therapy. That's all I was doing all the time until like, I, I just had to get it out there, you know, it's my coping, you know, so that only took three months. And so um, this other one that went by comparison, my newest one here, if you can see that um, shadows it took me 20 years to write. <laughs> so every book has its own journey, its own story, and really what I'm finding out, its own timeline, you know what I mean? And that, and my, one of my children's books there, one of my favorite children's books, uh, Rainbow Dots, it only took me a day to write this. So the illustrations is the one that took, you know, longer, and they came out fabulous, and I absolutely love how everything came out, but just in comparison to one day, three months, and then 20 years. So every story is unique and every story is its own, its own, you know, identity, its own person. The first book you said, Letters to Alexander. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to, if you're comfortable, I just, let me take a step back. I also went through a traumatic experience um, and it led me not to write books, but to help start Hindi's libraries. And I think something important for people to know and see is that there is an outlet um, when something emotional happens to you. It might be writing. In our case, it was starting a nonprofit. And um, Hindi's Libraries, of course, is named after a colleague of mine um, who passed away at the age of 32. And her husband is my co-founder. And we kind of framed this organization in her memory. But if you could touch on a little bit about what made you decide to take that state of mind you were in, which is kind of a whole mix of emotions um, going on, and turn it into something proactive, positive, in your case, a book for other readers to relate to you and to kind of get this piece of you. For those listening who maybe are experiencing something or have experienced something, what can you tell them right now? Wow, I got goosebumps (laughs) just hearing your testimony. Um, So 
my personal journey was that, um, I mean, I've always like, even with shadows, I've always my book shadows, I've always like had this dream. And I've always taken little, little tiny baby steps towards writing. And you know, one day, one day, one day, right. Um, then we went through the experience with Alexander. And that kind of just like jump started my just jump started my writing career. And you know, I didn't, I didn't see it that as a jumpstart at the, at the time of the time I was like, I was, I was grieving and, you know, it was my outlet. Like you said, that was, that was what I, what I did. I wrote. And, um, for me, it's just, it's just comforting, you know, just, it, it was comforting back. That's the only thing that comforted me really. It's just, it was my way of coping, my way of dealing with that because here you are, you lose a child and you're left, like you go, you come home from the hospital with like empty handed and like, how do you, you know what I mean? And like, I couldn't, that, that was the only way that I, I was able to, to assume, like to, to tell, you know, to feel like, like to write down his story, to, to make it like, to know for the world to know that, Hey, look, this child was born and his life mattered. And, and he impacted me. And these are my letters to him and stuff that I wish I could tell him that I never can now, but I wrote it all down. So in a, it was a different form, a different outlet of me expressing to him things I wish I, you know, if things would have turned differently. So unfortunately, tragic stuff happens all the time in life. And we're left with like, how do we, we're left with dealing with it. And that was one of those times. And so from there, um, I was, I, I honestly, I wasn't expecting that book to be done in three months. It just like, that's all that's, it's just like, it's just, it was almost like a story that had to be told and had to be told now. And so I just like, boom, boom, done, you know? And, but really that was the stepping stone. That was the foundation to all my other books that followed because, you know, I've been there, done that once. And now I'm like, oh, okay, that wasn't, you know, I, I can do it. You know, I've done it before. Like, you know what I mean? Like, let's try some new ideas. Let's try this idea, this idea, you know what I mean? So it was just, um, so anyway, um, just someone that's been there, someone that's going through something traumatic is just, um, you know, just find that thing that works for you. Like for me, like writing really worked for somebody. It might be like working out. It might be, you know, just try to find that positive thing I should say, because a lot of people, um, stuff like that can change you. And sometimes you can like gravitate towards the maybe non-positive things. And so if you find your passion in something positive, like try to focus on that and take baby steps because it's not going to happen overnight. You know, it's like little, little tiny baby steps and goals um, to get, to get you through your, your trauma. I mean, I'm still like, this happened four years ago and I'm still dealing with it, you know, but after I wrote it down, it was like a different, it was like a, like a healing, like a healing code already, you know, because I felt like that was a purpose that I fulfilled that I had to do with this experience. So that's, you know, that got, it turned out into what it is today. I wonder, did that, I see that your other books that you had written prior to the children's books were a different genre. Did um, your emotions or coping with that, did that, or becoming a mom, um, did that transition you into you know, changing into children's books? I've always, um, that's just always been a passion of mine. I've always loved children books, you know, even as an adult, I just like some, you know, the important, especially the ones with like really, really important messages and great pictures. So I love like all genres. I think, um, I've been doing lots of book reviews, um, for other authors. And I think that has a bigger motivating factor to why I transitioned into children's books because, um, I think that just influenced me more just just being a part of somebody else's journey influenced me more to kind of branch out into something completely different i mean my next novel is like i'm trying like i'm doing all kinds of genre my next novel is like a romance you know <laughs> so you know and i'm thinking about like a scary one after that and, that, and then my my shadows one is pretty you know emotionally packed but that's like a different kind of you know what i mean so i'm just kind of just trying out i'm starting out as an author and just trying out to see what works for me, you know, and what, what uh, probably eventually what I'm looking for is like, if I really love writing children's books, then I, that's probably the focus that I'm going to, you know, the path that I'm going to stick to and just like, right, right, right. You know, or if I like, I'm just like seeing where I, where, which one's my favorite. Really. Out the waters. You're trying to see what's out there, which is amazing. Yes, <laughs> yes exactly. Exactly. So I yeah. love that. introduce us to Sammy Octonite. Tell us about Sammy. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So Sammy Act tonight. Going to say hello to everybody. Hello. Are you in there? We're here. Well, Hi, Sammy. 
he, he's a he's a uh, yeah he's a friend. I, I like to call him Sammy Hack tonight. <laughs> I got him um, as a as a gift after the book for was written. So, but you know, it's he's pretty similar, right? He is, yeah, definitely Ooh. resemblance. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Okay, so um, that book was really uh, um, fun to write, and it's right over here. And it has, like, a lot of important messages. And, you know, it's like an anti-bully book, and it's a book about transitions for children that go through different, like, life stages or, like, uh, like big changes, like moving and, you know, going to a new school and meeting new friends. And But most importantly, this book is – um I actually – I was going to show you guys something here. So most importantly, this book is about, like, finding yourself. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So, like, right here, this page, um, if you can see it, um, this is – a Sally Sue and she's bullying our Sammy here and he's crying and he's all upset and um he's actually um he has a support system like, like his new friends are his support system and they like stand up you know like they intervene and hey don't be a bully to our new friend hey that's not nice hey stop it you know this back and forth goes on uh, them, them trying to get Sally to back off and she's so focused in on Sally on I mean I'm on um and Sammy, that nothing really stops, you know, and nothing really changes until Sammy um, stands up to himself, you know, stands up for himself. And he says, and he, it's, he comes to like a, it's like a pinnacle in the story where he really realizes that, you know, he's okay. He accepts himself, you know, for who he is and for his differences. And so he says, you know, I actually really like my uh, colorful polka dots, says Sammy. And at that point, it's when uh, Sully, um, Sue Whale swims away with a frown on her face. But nothing really, like, changed her um, her attitude or her behavior towards Sammy until he actually stood up for himself, you know. And I think that's a really important thing to, to teach, like, the children or our, or our children out there is that sometimes, like, we, it's great that we have all the support, but sometimes we got to learn to kind of think for ourselves, to kind of stand up for ourselves, you know, and to kind of, like, do it ourselves, you know, kind of thing. So I, um, I liked with how the direction of that went towards, like, there was all the support and all this, you know, people trying to help, but it didn't really make that big of a difference until Sammy took charge and he like, you know, Hey, you know, like leave me alone kind of thing back off. What was, what's the deal, you know? So, um, it also, um, my goal with the children's book, I, I, I love children's big books because you can write so many positive messages, you know. And another thing that I did with this book, which is really cool, and it was one of my favorite things to do is, like, like if you can see here, um, like right there, there's, like, like, right over there. There's, like, like, hidden messages, like, positive message throughout this book. So that one says, you are strong, you know. So I, like, like handwritten like all this like messages throughout for the kids to find there's like something that says you're brave you are loved you are courageous you know because children are so impressionable especially at younger ages and it's so important I think for them to like be like be told like all this positive stuff you know for them to start because they're going to start believing what they hear eventually you know so if they hear only negative that's probably going to have an impact on them later on you know so for books like that have positive messages that like tell them like, Hey, don't believe the lies. Don't believe the negative and don't let any of the negative words. Like, you know, that's not true. That's not true. Don't let them, you know, affect you. Don't let them like, you know what I mean? Instead, like, let's, let's get them built up to where like, it's all like sending them positive messages and any way they get that, you know, from their family members, from their support system, from books. For me, it's always been books, you know, like I've, books have been like always my saving grace and like from positive role models like teachers or any anywhere you know like the more positive they hear like you know I think the better for everyone really because one child is gonna it's gonna influence you know like others and others their whole little circle so anyway um I really had fun writing positive hidden messages in here and uh oh and the other thing too like a big, big message about this is just be yourself. I think a lot of the times um, what I've noticed is that we kind of maybe get stuck or hung up on like past mistakes or some ideas of ourselves that others like impose on us, you know, so it's kind of hard 
to kind of look beyond that sometimes. And so I think it is so important, again, for books like this, just like encouraging them, like motivating them. Hey, it's just be yourself, you know, and what does that mean? You know, it's like, it's okay to be, you know, we're not all, we're all the same and that's fine too. You know, it's like, we're all unique. We all have our strengths. We all have our talents. And so just, just, you know, do, do your best. Don't like try to be somebody you're not, you know, um, like there's this quote, um, let's teach our, t our children to think, not how to think. I mean, no, yeah, no, no, did I get it right? To think or how to think, not what to think. There you go. You know what I mean? So that's kind of like my philosophy. And I really enjoy children books. I'm hoping, and like I said, my other books, like my, the one that I'm working on, a lot of them are children books still, because I have like all these other great ideas for them. So um, yeah, um, a positive self image is very, very important. And like the more, the, the more we can get our kids to like, believe it, you know, believe it themselves first. And that's, I think how they're going to like represent themselves to others. So, um, I'm all for like positive messages and things like that within the books for, for our little ones. I think what you said is very important in the sense that people are influenced at such an early age and you, even when you joined us the first thing you started talking about was the teachers who made an impact on you second grade you mentioned at such a young age so you know everyone as adults we realize that everything we say um will be taken seriously and will be remembered it's our words it's our actions whether it's in a book that we read to our children as parents whether it's as influencers as educators everything we say has a very um important message and we have to really concentrate on the words and Something as we transition into your um, other book, Come Here, Butterfly, we, um, Indies Libraries, recently did a series of workshops where we talk about the components of literature. And two of the components you had touched on, the first is, of course, speaking and speaking up and the power of speech, which is something that is a theme in Rainbow Dots, you know, with Sammy talking about um, his comfort of his own body and speaking up for himself and, you know, kind of defending himself and finally um, people defending him. Um, that's the first component. The second component is actually called active listening. Um, and that I noticed is something that was talked about in Come Here Butterfly, which I love mm -hmm. for you to talk about. But in the beginning, you'll share with us how um, the child is saying, come butterfly, touch the flower, come read a book, come take a look at this, come take a look at this. And then the child steps back and says, Hey, Butterfly, what do you like to do? Um, and I thought that was such an interesting part of the book and in a children's book specifically, where you see the action step of the child saying, hey, wait a minute, I want to listen to you and learn about you. And I think that's a theme that's not always touched on in children's books. Um, you know, especially y young readers, you see, this is Dot, Dot likes this and this likes this and this one likes to do that. But your book actively had the reader read that sentence, hey, what do you like to do? And then at the end, you touch upon it again where you say, hey, I didn't know you liked to do that. And I thought that was so interesting. So tell us a little bit about Come Here, Butterfly. What inspired you to write that aspect and how you wrote it was so original, I thought. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, that was a, a very uh, nice book to write. Um, that one came about there's like a butterfly in my garden that just kind of hangs around and comes by every single day and so it kind of is that's what kind of inspired me that butterfly and i just took it and kind of incorporated it with i think a very powerful message that like what you said is very important to kind of educate and to teach our children and that's like the aspect of sharing you know and that most importantly though is the aspect of respect i think a lot of the times um like relationships like people just need to realize that like in a relationship there's like this huge respect component you know so not only are our words powerful our actions are like great but like we have to respect the other person so if somebody doesn't like something and and they speak up about it we need to be able to like you know stop they don't like it apologize move on you know like take those little steps those little actions because they are big and they are um they're very uh, important in the relationships, you know, and especially in friendships. I think um, it's so um, for younger ones, for the younger ones to teach them, like, you know, like just like with play dates or just having like, um, 
you know, uh, with their classmates, you know, just to for them to realize that it's not everything like the world's not really all centered around them. And I know it's hard because <laughs> the world does center around them when especially when they're so young, you know. And so uh, just to kind of like even just to plant the seed just a little bit of some of something that, you know, can grow even like, you know, or be like nurtured and grow upon later in the future, I think is like, is so amazing to do, you know, even if it reaches just one child, you know, just to know that you planted that thought in that child's mind, you know, and if he's ever presented with a situation where like, you know, like, 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 it's more, mostly it's about friendships, right? So like, when you're making new friends, especially like, um, I tried it to really, really make it really simple for, for the children to understand, for the child to understand, right? For the children to understand, um, like, when they're in a new friendship, like, it's not all about them, you know, it's about like, okay, let's take, let's take turns playing with our car, you know, let's take turns sharing about ourselves, you know, let's, let's kind of, it's kind of a back and forth. And a lot of the time, I feel like, we don't always see that even like in, you know, even like in older people or, you know, like we don't see that back and forth. So like if we can start some somewhere like, you know, to, to teach them about that back and forth, I think is like amazing idea. <laughs> I agree. I want to talk about something I noticed in your book in come your butterfly and mm -hmm. the ABC book that you uh, had sent over. Right. Um, like you ended with a message in both of those books. Right. You did the alphabet and then in Come Here Butterfly, and I believe it was this book, you there was a page there of just you, wisdom um, and just words. Can you show us those pages? I loved that. I thought that was so interesting. I do have the ABC book one here. And the, this is my, I'm still waiting for these copies as well. But um, so this is just my proof copy. But my favorite thing about this ABC book because it's very it's written like very very simple terms and it's like in a fun fun simple way and my favorite thing about this is like the size of this book especially for a little kid like especially like for the target audience you know they're they're little they're little there are little people right so for them to be able to hold and grasp this book in their hand while they're like exploring it, I think is like really really um I think that's the best thing that I did about this. And it's, it's just like, um, if you can see, there's a giraffe, there's a fish. And it's just, just another, you know, another little tool for them. But um, I think they're going to have fun. In the ends of Rainbow Dots, you add this message. You are strong. You are brave. I love how you did that. And, in, and I believe in now I explore my ABC as I open it. Yes. Oh, yes, the that one. Okay. Also, you had written a message to all the all yes. my... Yes, okay, let me read that one. I, I love that message. Okay. okay, so this is the end. This is the zebra, and then it ends with, To all the mighty lions of the world, always be yourself. Love yourself first. Take chances. Believe in yourself. Work hard and go anywhere you dream. Be great. Be awesome. Go the distance. You can do it, you know? So I... The same concept of like rainbow dots, like um, I have like um, positive message. I, I call them positive message because I think it's so important to build up the our children's like self esteem and their like choices is all around self esteem and you know um, discipline of and all this all this stuff that um, a pot that like revolve around a positive self image and that's kind of like where I'm hoping to um, accomplish with my books and with all these like positive words like just to build up their positive self image you know they need to have like a level of respect for themselves first you know they need to love themselves first you know what I mean and the sooner that they learn that message I think like the, the the better because um that's so important in like everything in all our relationships and ev in everything like let's let's teach them like a, a level of like respect for themselves a level of like you know like of what they want until you know, they're able to decide let's like teach them like like positive things and let's also encourage them to do that they can do this one was more like about accomplishing their dreams you know let's let's um let's show them that if okay so for me, it was books. For somebody else, it might be like, you know, a, an astronaut. It might be, who knows, you know, what their dreams are. And a lot of the times, like, um, their dreams can get 
squashed temporarily or, or whatnot, you know, so why not encourage them to continue to take steps, however long it might take for them to, to reach their goals and their dreams. And, you know, that's, that's the whole point of this, like, so like, believe in yourself first, you know, work hard is probably the underlining book of um, message of like all my books, work hard, work hard is like, will take you like, wherever you like, it's like your vehicle to your dreams, you know, whatever your dreams are, it usually involves some kind of hard work. <laughs> So, you know, don't be afraid of hard work because hard work is important. Um, I think what you said that it does take work and it does take time. I think children need to remember that message because these days everything is about instant gratification, right? You have exactly. to it's right away. They expect it soon because they know that some things you can get very quickly. Oh, you need to reach somebody? What do you mean they didn't answer me in the ne- in five minutes? So this idea of working hard and patience and time sensitivity and just perseverance. It's something that we have to keep reminding them in any way we can, whether it is, you know, like that message in your book, or it be when we speak to them or educate them. It's, it's something that they're losing touch with. I feel as a mom, because they're able to get things so quickly and virtually and, you know, I can airdrop it to you and I can just email it to you and you'll have it in two minutes. And it's, you know, this different um, idea is very important. Tell us about what books inspired you as a child. You mentioned a lot about your educators and people who are role models in your lives. What books did you read that still stick with you? Right. My absolute favorite is uh, Dr. Seuss. It's called Are You My Mother? It's about like a little like chicken trying to find out. <laughs> so that's like my absolute favorite. Um, I really like a lot of uh, like older when I'm older. Um, I like a lot of um, mystery, like James Patterson, and I like um, uh, Lee Childs, and like a lot of different kind of authors. And um, so I, I, I mean, I like reading, so I pretty much read anything. But I do like to stick more to the like suspense aspect of it. Um, similar to the message that you're giving in your books, you know, you can make a change. You can do what you want to do. You don't need to, um, you know, be a superhero to make a difference. You find right. your passion and you move forward. And I think that's a message that children need to hear and it needs to be repeated. Um, yes, yes. What we see on the news and what we're reading about, mm-hmm. they need to know that they have the power to make a difference. I mean, even now, that's exactly all, right. these, all these children who are, they're sewing face masks, they're printing them out on their 3D printer, they're, you know, collecting cans or, you know, uh, perishable goods. And these are children who got that message from authors, from parents, from teachers, and they felt that power to do good. And I think that people like you who come forward and inspire them and instill that message, I think that you guys are the superheroes of today because that's what, you know, that's what they're listening to. Um, I also, by the way, love suspense and thrillers. I was a big Christopher Pike fan. I love reading murder mysteries and I still like translated mm-hmm. into watching all these murder mysteries, um, crime series. Um, And I love that you put hidden messages in your books. I think that that's a super cool thing to do and a liberty to have. And not everyone will find it, but some people who do feel like they found, you know, a secret treasure when they do in the corner, right? Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I think it all boils down to mindset, you know, a positive mindset. Like as a writer at all, I think for me anyway, it comes down to like having the right mindset. And it took me a while to get here. Like, like for my shadows book, like I said, it took 20 years to get where I'm at. Right. But it's about like setting that goal, you know, and taking little steps. Sometimes like that goal seems so high and it seems so out of reach that it's like, Oh yeah, I can't, you start like negative self-talk, you know, and that's the whole thing that we're trying to reframe and re kind of like give it the boot. You know what I mean? Like we trying to like, as, the goal is to just like positive, positive, positive. Yeah, I can do it. It's a big goal. But you know, if I take this step, I'm like closer to, to, to my goal than I was yesterday. You know what I mean? So it's all about like little steps and it's like reframing your mind. A lot of the time is what I've noticed, you know, for me personally, I've always struggled with being a perfectionist, like, like in college, like, you know, the, the 20 pages of an essay for one essay, I had to revise that. Like it was like, it, it was, it looked good, but for me being a perfectionist, like mentality, I had to revise it over and over and over and over again, you know? So before you know it, like I'm up all night, like revising it because it, I just had to get it just right, you know? And I've like struggled with that, like my whole life until recently, really, where like, I think that the products of my books is where I kind of like had to grow as a person and I had to kind of get over that 
like perfectionist mentality. And I've had to kind of reevaluate myself and be like, okay, so if I, this is my product, right? I'm happy with my product. Uh, my editor thinks it's great or whatever, you know, I'm not going to keep, I'll, I'll probably still be revising my books today if I haven't like, if I wasn't able to like overcome that, it was kind of holding me back really that barrier, you know, so we all have our barriers and all our vices and our things. But for me, it was that so it took a while, but and I'm still working on it because it has to be like, oh, the other cool thing um, it has to be perfect. <laughs> but that's kind of, you know, it had to be perfect. Now I kind of had to reframe my mindset and be like, you know, there's it's a positive message, the pictures look good. You know, it, it's great, you know, stop trying to like revise it, you know, um, and revise it and revise it and revise it. And it kind of kind of works. I kind of chose to use that in my favor because like you can take that and kind of shift it, you know, like whatever your your thing is, like you can shift it to use it towards like now because I have that mind frame, I could actually pick up on a lot of attention to details, you know, that I'd be like, okay, so this font, I like, I could, I have more options available to me because of that. But it took me a while to kind of revise that mentality and use it towards, you know, I, doesn't mean just because that's part of me doesn't mean I have to keep revising and revising, and revising, you know, it just means that I could revise it, make it look good. And then, you know, at some point, you have to stop revising, <laughs> you know, so it's been interesting getting to warm up today. And that's one of the, the other thing that I really like about rainbows is that I chose to um, design my book like that, you know, probably all the perfectionists out there would probably open up this book and be like, okay, the fonts, the fonts too is too, too small that this is too, the colors too dark or whatever, you know, but I chose to design that this book on purpose because we are not perfect you know we are in fact we're perfectly imperfect you know and it took me a while to get that idea wrapped in my head and then and then I had so much fun designing that because the whole idea is poured within this book you know it's like um I chose to like you know a strand of Sammy's hair is out of place you know because I chose to put it there like like I mentally I, I made an effort to like do d different details in here just to like to make the you know to make the kids realize or aware and or educate them in a different way you know because the pictures are everything for children's books you know and so um just for little details that I added like I think is um that was really fun with how I chose to design this you know um I chose to not to use different techniques and because we're all different and then incorporate it all it, it, it came out really nicely how it came together like with the, in one, one book you know so that was kind of that was kind of nice. I think where the butterfly book is, Come Here Butterfly, that's kind of like another aspect of it that I'm trying to like put out there, you know, like the boundary aspects, the, you know. Um, I love the technique <laughs> in the butterfly book of your illustration also. For that one, um, that one, I didn't really use the, all the different type of designs that I chose to use in this book. That one was more focused on just one design you know because it was more maybe like two designs because it kind of focused more on the back and forth relationship of the butterfly and the little boy you know and I don't know if you've seen it but my whole point was like well one of the biggest point in that book to get across is um because like when you know it's almost like he's like come here butterfly come do this with me right come right here come right here like he's like almost like trying to make him to come here right he's almost like trying to force him like come here come on you know what I mean and then when he realized that didn't work you know like he's like okay you know he, like, he took a step back and he's like thinking he's like oh you know maybe if I change my approach and be like hey you know what can, can we be friends you know can is it okay if we share a little bit about ourselves you know what I mean so the little boy like learned something like huge you know like he decided to change his approach and then um, when the story shifted, you can see the little butterfly is like on the little boy's finger. And that was like, that was so fun to like incorporate it, especially in a, a picture because a picture speaks, you know, louder than words sometimes really. So for the butterfly to be here on his finger and to start like sharing about, you know, the butterflies, uh, what he likes to do and what he's, you know what I mean? So it was a nice like transition that like just really worked with the story and um, the technique and design of that book is more um, is uh, I try to make it more like just the back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So if you could see the way it's designed, 
there isn't very many other like um, it's not very uh, diverse as diverse as rainbow dots is it's more just like the back and forth back and forth and the little boy starts by sharing about himself and then like it changes to like that to the butterfly and then like at the end it's like they're like oh okay this is nice we learned something about each other and you know and it took them like a little little bit of a few steps you know a little journey to get to where they're at, at the end but at the end they're best friends and you know so that was that was fun to uh to kind What's of the writing process Do you write the entire book all the pages of the book and then you do the illustrations do you do page and then an illustration do you just jot it down randomly and organize it okay so um that's a good question um so um my I like to, I, I love my car. Okay. That's my space. That's my little happy space because I like to, I mean, I, I write in my office as well, but it is not as like, it's just my happy space because when I, I get my computer and I go in my car and then, um, let's say I'm writing about a beach, right? So I just drive to the beach and then I just like, I just sit there and just absorb it all, you know, absorb the details, absorb the colors, absorb the interactions, you know? And then, and then I'm right. And then like, like, so not only is it fresh in my mind, I can go back to my car and like, you know, so if you ever see anybody in their car or on their computer, you know, don't, <laughs> there, there's people that are purposefully using that time productively, you know? So my space is my car and, um, my, my, my writing space mostly. I mean, I do, I've done a lot of productive work in, in my office too, but I do like the, like, I create the environment my, for myself, you know what I mean? Like, so I like to be like, um, I also like music in the background. So I'm like blasting my music and I'm like typing and then like right after, or if I'm writing about a character in the forest, I go, you know, for a hike or something and then come back to my car. I just, I just love my car. And, um, so each book is, um, the way, well, let's see, let's, let's use this one for example. So our, um, this book here. So this book here was kind of like a dual action. So I was doing, and this is, because each book's like its own has its own little personality you know its own entity each book's unique so i with this book here like i just do whatever works for me you know and what's worked for me for this book is um so okay so i want to do a jellyfish right so then i just drew the jellyfish first and then i did my writing at the end you know and then this is a special book because it's, it's so simple and it's so like like little kids can understand it, you know, so comp comprehensible for them. But for this one in, in particular, I did the illustrations first and then the words. For this one here, I actually did it opposite. So I started with the story. I had my, actually, I had an idea in my head for a while. I just, I don't, I don't think I was really ready to, until I overcome some of the things I mentioned, you know, until I have overcome some of those like uh, perfectionist complexity and, uh, certain things I had to overcome first before I could just like, just write, write it like where, where I was confident enough, like, you know, this, this is okay. Like what you said, you know what I mean? Like encourage the kids to, to reach their goals. And that's exactly kind of like what I went through. It's been a process to get here because we have like all these ideas and, you know, ideas of like, maybe, maybe I'm not, I'm not even going to say it because I've learned to just not even put it out there. Each book is its own its own, you know, own book, its own story. So each technique that I've used, like for one book, it might be different for the next book and for the next book and for the next book. It just kind of like, like when I, you just got to let your creative juices like kind of flow is what I realized, you know, and if you have an idea, just like put it down, you know, just write it down and don't, don't be so focused on the editing part until later, just write your story down. If you have a story, just write it down you have your idea of your pictures, just draw them. And then at the end, it kind of like, it just kind of comes together eventually, you know, with your little steps that you take toward like the little step that I take towards it. It all just kind of like comes together eventually, you know, but don't be so focused on like the final product, you know, so they only, they all have their own, their own schedule and you kind of have to kind of go with that. And obviously you have your own schedule too as an author and, and you have to kind of just make it work in that regards. What is some of the best feedback you got, whether it's from students in a school you went to and you read or someone mailed you fan mail? What is like the best thing you received or most surprising thing you received after reading a book or after someone had purchased a book from you? Um, I always love like the pictures <laughs> that the kids sent or the like 
Oh, it's so beautiful. Like even like on a little piece of paper, like the little letters, like, like uh, the little pictures that they draw with the little message or this, that or the other, especially when they draw my character, like, you know, this is pretty similar to Sammy, but when they draw my character or when they even create my character, it just like, it melts my heart. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like the best feeling in the whole wide world. And, um, I think for my for my novels, like hearing feedback, like "Hey, you got it," you know, I read your book in one day, you know, and like give us more, you know, give us more, and like that's just the best. Or I think, I think uh, the other thing that's really awesome to hear is like, you know, where can I get this book? Where can I get your next book? You know, uh, it's really cool as to when someone's interested in supporting me on my journey, um, because you know, it can be tough as an author, especially starting out, you know. There's a quote that says, I lose myself in books, but I find myself there too. Yes, yes, That's yes, most yes, exactly. Writers, they kind of, you just, you know, are sucked right into that world. And like you said, you're able to use all your senses and you kind of put down the book and you're like, whoa, I'm not, you know, like you're just, you're transplanted into this other world. And I think that exactly. you are certainly for children, the ones that were shared with us, I think that they really are between the colors and the message, you really are able to um, imbue in them and to share with them your feelings. And certainly I, as a mom, appreciate your work and I appreciate oh, the time. Thank you. I think that um, what you said is um, we, we should all really, really listen. You know, you don't need to be perfect. You don't need to um, go so deep and start second guessing yourself. It's all about that confidence. Um, and just right. knowing that you can do it. And I think that that feeling will transfer into, in your case, the readers. Uh, right. They right. See that, that you put that effort into it and they see that right. you work so hard on it and your passion is evident. And I think that that's something that those who are looking to write a book or do something, it's just that your passion, which is so clear in our conversation, um, that's what, that's what shines through. Um, can you leave us, Monica, with one of your favorite children's quotes or a book quote right. from a children's book? Right. Um, my favorite, I kind of made mention of it a, a little bit earlier, is the one where we um, teach a child um, how to think, not what to think. So, so, so if we could teach them, like, how to think, you know what I mean, like, versus what to think, which sometimes can be a problem in society. But if we can teach them how to think, then it's like, I think like it's that's the most important, <laughs> the most Monica, important. Message. Tell us about where. Tell us about where um, our viewers and our listeners. Where can they find you? Where can they grab your books? How can they learn more? Absolutely. Um, I'm kind of like all over social media. Um, I've I've sh um, I've shared some some of the links with you uh, on Instagram. I'm on Monica's book reviews on Facebook. I'm at Monica Exley Books. And then Exley Monica on Twitter. And so as long as you put Monica Exley books or Monica Exley, some kind of uh, um, version of that, you'll find me. And I really do hope you guys do find me because like, I, I really look forward to some more likes and some more subscribes and some more follows and some more, you know, some more support because who doesn't want more support, right? <laughs> Well, Monica, you are a force to be reckoned with. You have this energy that came on the second you joined us. I thank you for your time. Um, oh. I thank you, our viewers, for watching, for listening to Monica. Go check out her books. Check out everything about her. She is really fascinating. Thank you, Monica. Thank you for your thank time. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely.